Second chance, trusted you again. I feel sad. Broken strings, cause you play me like a violin. Shame on me for all your seven deadly sins. Had it all, but you craved attention. Drowning in your own reflection. Put me down just to see me get back up again. Six feet under. It all there's nothing left here anyway. We used to talk, but now we don't know what to say. Now we're just two passing strangers who tried you like goodbye forever. Put me down just to see me get back up again. Six feet under.
into this week's broadcast of the Esports Tower Rumble in Rocket League. We are continuing on with our Esports Tower Club Championships tonight in Rocket League. Seven teams enter, hoping for a shot at the final title of the fall season. By the end of the night, four teams will be left standing with a shot at the club championship title next week. We have our round robin to continue. Fish and Jim, Jacob Paul, we're calling all of the action. Last week, we saw the round robin stages. We've got a couple more to go, and then we will have our five remaining teams that have a shot at the title. It should be a lot of fun tonight, Jacob. It's not only that we have so many teams competing in this tournament, but we also have two versions of the Barracudas, some of the all-star players from Esports Tower, Barracudas Black and Barracudas White, who are also kind of duking it out in this tournament. They're kind of positioned at the top of their brackets right now, so we'll see if they can overall get to the Grand Finals, and a lot of teams fighting just kind of claw their way into the bracket as things start to get serious as we move on into these best of fives. Yeah, as you said, we got Barracudas White and Barracudas Black right now. The Barracudas Black in Group A, Barracudas White in Group B, and as you said, both of them are at the top of their standing. We also got the Lynx, the Wolves, the Stingrays, the Mammoths, and the Eagles all there ready to go. And again, we got a couple more round robin games to go tonight. And then we are when we are done with the round robin games, we will have our quarterfinal matchup to leave our last four teams standing. Heading into next week to see who will claim the club championship. Again, it's been a lot of fun as we start off the night. We do want to remind everybody to support your team, celebrate your successes, and be respectful to the fans. And the mobs remove anyone who violates the chat rules. Before we get into our round robin games, though, we do have Doc's keys to the game that we need to get to to make sure everybody knows what they're doing as they're trying to fight for those final bracket spots. Those are to create mistakes, punish the overcommits, play the walls better, and demo to disrupt. Doc's keys are presented by Esports Tower. Improve your game sense, improve your team play, improve your performance under pressure. We get matched with great players and professional coaches to help you rank up at Esports Tower. Dot com. In 3v3, we'll start with a best of three for the round robin and then best of five for the single elimination bracket. And of course, Jacob, the always normal Rocket League rules when it comes to gameplay. Golden goal, sudden death, everything else pretty standard when it comes to in game. Yeah, we're going to have a great opportunity for these teams to show their talent overall. I think the first match that we're getting into is going to be the Barracudas versus the Eagles here. Uh, and uh, this is a great time to see how Barracudas Black, if they're going to be continuing on the win streak that we saw them pull off last, uh, last week. Are they still in top form this week is the main question. Yeah, win here for Barracudas Black would lock them in the top spot of Group A. And, you know, as you said, they were 2-0 last week. They are absolutely on fire. We'll see what they can do against the Eagles. The Eagles need to win here to give themselves a shot at that final spot in the bracket. If they're not able to win, they will unfortunately be eliminated from the club championship. So a ton of pressure on both these teams. Let's kick off game number one and hop into it. A slash right away gets control with the gag. Going to clear that down over to the other side already. For the Barracudas looking to threaten to score the not quite going in either team's favor, but a trip is going to elevate up. Trying to put it in a better position, but the team position is just a little bit awkward for a follow up, so it's going to get cleared out by Tony on toward the near post, and it is going to be cleared back toward the midfield mark. Look at the ball up in the air. Drift ends up pulling back. Yag's got demo, so what to make the smart play? He jumps another demo. Great play there by the Barracudas, but the Eagles defense able to hold strong. Tony going to center it up, but unfortunately nobody's there, so it goes back to the blue side. Nice intercept by no worries, but so far the Eagles not able to get any pressure. Eggs trying to start off some sort of play by passing it over to Kababy. It's going to get out the wall. Now follow up back toward the goal, and it's drilled in there by X13 Adrift. Like just a matter of time before the Barracudas scored. They had so much pressure in this first minute. They strike first in this round robin game. Drift looking for one more. Can't quite fight in the corner. Ball gets cleared down. Good baby. Nice little punch on it. Oh, the nice little fake. It's a wide open net. If he can beat Slash the ball, and he can. And it's 2 to nothing Barracudas. Things are starting to waterfall over toward the Barracuda side. I mean... Coaches believe that the Eagles team had shown a lot of growth last week despite the tough matchup. The team, the team can keep up with Barracudas Black, but at this point, they're going to have to 
really try to make some sort of great clear happen here as no worries unable to really pinch it off the wall there yags now taking control of it a drift following close behind pushing it back to center it and it's going to get pinched back off toward the side Get possession, no worries. Tries to get a touch on it as Vault comes racing in. 13 over, didn't even need the pass. Oh, I thought it was hit, but it hits the crossbar. The Eagles get a bit of a sigh of relief on that one. Oh, double commit there from the Barracudas. Might give slight opportunity for the Eagles to clear it, but it looks like the Barracudas have managed to recover from that double commit. Tony trying to clear it, but he has absolutely no boost to do so, making his job much harder. A little bit of a flip into the goal. The Eagle showing a bit of life, thanks to Vault. A great little touch by Vault. Sneaks it past the Barracudas. Two to one here in game one as a drift kind of punches it down. Gets it around Tony, but unfortunately his follow-up is wide of the net. Gabini couldn't quite get to that ball in time with enough speed. Barracudas missed getting a goal back. One chance here for Yag to try to waterfall it down. Gabini in an awkward spot, not able to find it. And a drift shot goes wide as well. Halfway through the first game, Barracudas holding on to a very narrow lead. One apiece. Now it's taking control of by no worries. It's going to go wide, way off into the far corner. Drift trying to elevate it up. Is going to air dribble it himself. Not quite going to get it there. Ball is now centered back, but no follow-up. Tony trying to rotate in, take control of it. Goes up against the Barracudas, but Vault is going to whiff on that follow-up as well. So the Eagles still trying to find their equalizer. Another two minutes left The Baby. Trying to maybe put this game away, but he can't quite find it. A little bit wide of the net. Cleared away by the Eagles. No worries. Gonna go up. Not quite able to make solid contact. Though Tony will. Yags makes the save! But he couldn't stop the ball's momentum. And it's 2-2 two two now. 1 minute 38 seconds left in the first game. Quick kickoff taken by Yags. Just a little bit wide of the goal. Stopped at mid by Barracudas. Trying to keep the side control on their side their favor. Double touch with the pass over to Gababy. Nice redirect toward the goal. It isn't quite centered up. Tony now taking advantage of that. Dribbling it up the field. Setting it up for Vault, but Vault goes flying past. He's going to miss his shot on goal, leading the drift and Gababy to put their counter attack on the near post. And that just kind of fizzles out. 15 seconds left here in game one. Both teams looking for the win. Tony shot goes wide. Barracudas gets his ash and a drift and try and maybe pinch this one off the ground. Nice demo from Gabady, but the shot was wide of the net regardless. Yags, one more try. That one will go wide as well. Kind of takes an awkward hop off of Slash. Look at Baby able to challenge it. Yags with the touch and drift going for the goal and he finds it. The Barracudas have a lead with 30 seconds left. Second goal for a drift, a one goal lead for Barracudas. Kick off, pinch off to the side, but no team really following up on it, but a drift now takes it with the quick pass, and that was almost another goal for the Barracudas. Would have been a nice insurance goal at this point in the game. Still crucially for the Barracudas. Well, there you go, there is the insurance goal. Barracudas now making it really difficult for the Eagles to stage any sort of comeback in game one. Eagles. 15 seconds left. It's going to be almost impossible. Yags might even make it 5 to 2, but his shot is stopped. Now it looks like with 5 seconds left, despite a valiant effort from the Eagles, they are going to drop to game one, and that is going to put them in do or die territory. Remember, they got to win this series to have a chance at the bracket. If they lose, they will not make it to the club championship bracket, so they need to win. and they gave Barracuda's Black everything they could handle, Jacob, but at the end of the day, that talented roster, Adrift, Yags, and Kibabe, they just put up too many goals for the Eagles to match. 
It might be talented, sure, but certainly not infallible. We saw a lot of mispositioning by both teams, sometimes team members committing to the ball when they had no boost or resources to back it up. So it seems both the teams a little bit shaky in coordination in game one. So maybe the Eagles, you know, if they warm up, just get things going, improve those communication channels a little bit better. I think we saw a lot of life from them, and it really didn't get away from them until the last 30 seconds of the game. And this was a worrying trend last week with Barracuda's Black. Despite their dominance, their first series last week was a, kind of a slog early on. Game one looked a little iffy. So right there with you, maybe the Barracuda's Black just need to warm up, which is good. Bad news for the Eagles. Barracuda's Black already in the bracket. If they win, though, they will be the number one overall seed. So there's always a little bit of perks with that. You have an easier matchup, potentially. But right now, both these teams gunning for a win. Let's kick off game two slash predicts the banana on the kickoff no distraction there but yag still has possession trying to get it past no worries but he's able to make a nice stop there and prevent the barracudas from any shenanigans early on no worries pinches the ball off to the near post double commit though on the follow-up leaves the eagles completely defenseless demo on top of that onto tony leaves their goal wide open and barracuda score their first Trying to stomp out any hope the Eagles have, and nearly another goal off the kickoff. But Tony in an excellent position now has a chance. The Barracudas did have to get back. Unfortunately, Tony can't quite make contact with the ball. No worries, though. Does come racing in. Oh, nice takeout of the player with the ball, but unfortunate follow up. The Eagles nearly put a goal in, but end up being on the defensive end. Another demo on to Tony. He's had a bit of a target on his back of the Barracudas. He's going to respawn. No worries. Actually, has a lot to worry about there as his clear fails. The ball's now going to dribble itself back toward mid. And now the Barracudas overextend. They pay for it. Both teams hoisted by their own petard of overaggression, I suppose. It's got a great shot here. Didn't put enough oomph on it. So it's able to be saved easily. No worries in vault. Kind of double commit awkwardly on that ball and allows the Ags to get possession. Fancy feet there, but no worries. Not going to be fooled, though he will be demoed. The Barracudas maintain possession. Drift going up. Hits off the crossbar. Can't quite find that second goal. Third demo on to Tony this game. Falk still trying to drive it up the field. Demo back on to Gababy, giving the Barracudas a taste of their own medicine. At a drift almost single-handedly gets a goal for the Barracudas, almost pushing them back into the lead. Yikes is going to keep the side control. No worries, not in a good position with no boost, and they've double demo to clear out the goal, and the Barracudas still don't find a goal. Unfortunately, Yikes just had a really awkward angle on the net. Now going to try and pass it back. There's another demo, but he's just never angled his car actually at the goal. So no worries, he's able to make a nice save. Now it drift, puts it up. Unfortunately, I don't think Yags is expecting it, so Yags oh, makes a save. But this time, they're able to stop the overaggression in their cross map goal. Now halfway through the game, still tied one apiece. Quick shot back by the Eagles. And Yags gets demoed. Maybe he's going to leave it instead for a drift to try to get the clear as he moves up to clear out the goal. Drift, pinch off the wall. Ball too high for Yates to follow up and another open goal left. Demo back onto Gababy. Very scrappy fight thus far. Oh, fakes out one of them. He's just got one left before the goal and that's he's going to find the save. Yates coming clutch for the Barracudas. That demo from Slash. The drift will get possession. He'll hit it off the corner, though no worries there with the touch. And now the Eagles looking to get on the offensive. No worries. Some fancy moves. Unfortunately, can't quite hit the ball. So he just easily loses possession. Tony going to rip it down. Yags is pushing forward. Barracudas have to awkwardly retreat. In the end, it's a shot on goal. It is a bit wide. A double commit comes out from the Barracudas, but it keeps spot in their net. 90 seconds left, both these teams trying to get an edge here in game two. Ah, 
still continuing on the Barracuda's trend of getting it close to the goal, but not having the follow-up. I think everyone's just so busy trying to get demos that there isn't necessarily anyone in position to try to get a goal. Egg's going to try to get it in a good spot for his teammates, but back passes it to a drift. Unable to get the redirect off of Gabady. Some misplays by the Barracudas are giving the Eagles some much valuable time. No worries. Pass midfield. Yeggs off the ground. And a demo on to Tony. And no worries as well. I don't know if I've ever seen so many demos in just one game. We talk about it all the time. Sometimes going to the demo isn't the best play because pointed out, you don't put yourself in the actual position, you kind of take out the rotation that you could have bet on. And you have to wonder if the Barracuda could have added a couple more goals if they didn't keep trying to demo the goalie. Instead, 15 seconds left, there's another demo that goes out. Yank yeah, gets all stolen away. Barracudas might just have to be playing for overtime here. One final attempt, and Drift gonna clear it down. Yanks gets the shot, it's just wide, and it touches the ground just by a hair. And we go to overtime here in game number two. The Barracuda's looking to sweep the series, and the Eagles to get us to a game three. Yanks back passing them to their own goal. A vault getting demoed again. Barracuda's continuing on in their demo heavy strategy. Scrappy fighting in midfield, shot off to back corner. Walt with the redirect toward the goal off the post. Follow up by the Eagles. Can they set it up again? No worries. Has it, but the shot goes way wide. The Eagles might have thrown away their only opportunity to get back in the game. We'll have to see if they can recover. Ball bouncing in front of the net, but the drift is a little bit too close, so no worries. Able to clear it out. Now Tony trying to put it in on net, easily stolen away. Slash comes in, but he can't get to the ball. It's all up to no worries. The Drift, I think, wanted to pass over to Yags, and Barracuda's Black just has not been on the same page much in this game. A lot of miscommunications as the ball gets stolen away, but it hits off the crossbar. The Barracudas barely hang on in overtime, and we'll see if they're able to make the Eagles pay for it. Nice waterfall it down, but a bad pinch off. It's gonna put the Eagles in a much better position. Of course, they move back to where their own goal. Tony gets demoed again. Demo on to no worries. Yags passes it back toward mid. For the Barracudas, and the drift can get it over to Yanks, but he was just a bit too high. And now Tony and no worries. Well, they tried for the demo, but Gababy ends up getting demoed instead. Now Yanks over to a drift, but a nice steal by Tony. And drift comes in possession for the Barracudas. Over to Yanks. There's no one to pass it to, so no worries. Just steals it, and he gets it around everybody. But two minutes into overtime, the Eagles win the game and extend the series. And I had my sink I had uh, some sneaking suspicions throughout. It all came together for me. He was the one driving around all on the field, just trying to get demos everywhere. But effectively, just. You know, I, I, I'm sure he had a nice joyride, but in the end, it just really only made his team a two-person team, and that advantage eventually worked out in favor of the Eagles, driving this to a Game 3. Yeah, I think the uh, the demo strategy, it, it again, it can work if you can, you know, cause disruptions in rotations. The problem is, as you said, it basically left his team in, I mean, more for more, better or worse, a two-on-two -two with how many demos he was getting, but it just didn't seem like a drift and Yanks were ever able to connect. And now we go to game three. Remember the stakes. If the Eagles win, they have a shot at the bracket. If they lose, they will unfortunately be eliminated and not have a chance at the Fall Club Championship. Meanwhile, Barracuda is black. They're already in, but a win here would lock them up at the top seed as we head to game three. Winner take all, do or die for the Eagles. And we'll see if the devil happy strategy of the Barracudas will shift or they'll be able to capitalize on the open goals this time. 
full up on boost for all the members of the Eagles. They're going to be able to stop Yeggs with that forward drive. Plays it over Gababy. This is an opening breakaway shot, but takes a bounce off of one of the Barracudas to still push it into the corner. That might have been a great opportunity. Now it gets cleared back past mid-mark. No worries. Off to the corner. A bit of a devil commit from the Barracudas. They're both bunched up in the same corner. That's going to lead to this thing still being scoreless. To oh, my goodness. One unexpected play from Gababy. It seems he's back to the follow-up strategy rather than focusing on demos and pays dividends for the Barracudas. Okay, sometimes when you're just camping in front of the net, good things will happen. Ball just kind of rolled in awkwardly off the hood. That's the first goal for the Barracudas. Yags nearly waterfalls in a second one. But it's just a bit too high. Tony gonna get that ball stolen away. There's the demo though, but it ends up going on to Yags. Now the Barracudas gotta play a bit defensive. Ball goes over a drift, over Yags. Slash has a chance, but a drift puts it just high enough. There was no follow-up shot attempt here for the Eagles. Demos traded back and forth between the two teams. Now the respawns come through. Pass to Gababy. Back over to center where Yeggs is waiting. Taken by Tony. Off the wall. Follow up by No Worries. Defused. But it might not be enough. There was one final attempt by a drift, it looked like. It is just a little bit wide of the net. And now Gababy almost finding the second goal for the Barracudas. Pinch there with Tony to clear that ball away from his own net and drift on defense. Easily gets to pass one, gets to pass the second. Gonna launch it home, but Slash able to get just enough speed to slow that ball down. The baby will reset with it off the ceiling, looking to pitch it over to a teammate, but didn't quite land on it. And then a couple of misses by everybody. I mean, the ball will end up back in Yag's possession. The pass back to Gababy. Over to Yag's. Looking for Gababy in front of the net. The ball's just a bit too high, and the Barracudas can't find another goal. Around the corner, blocked by Barracudas. It's a bit bunched up. They are going to clear out. Strip takes the shot toward the goal off the backboard. They rotate up too far to follow up, meaning the Eagles have a nice opportunity to clear. They're trying to decide who wants to take it. That's going to head over to No Worries. Has to contest against Yeggs. Runs right into him, and that kills any momentum that the ball has for a clear. Last minute save by Bold. And over rotation again! Oh, the Eagles are having opportunities here, but they just can't quite capitalize on them. Try it one more time. This time, though, it drift was far enough back. You've got Tony right behind it. Flash will get a nose on that ball as well. It'll be Yags who ends up with possession. Tries to center it up. Not quite able to find it. Right now, the Eagles need to find a goal of their own. Is Flash going to clear it down? Tony in the corner. This is a great chance here. Up in the air. No worries. But Yags able to make the save. Slash didn't have enough momentum to get that ball towards the net. Barracudas remain in the lead with just over a minute left, but as I say that, Tony from midfield chips it in, and it's one-to-one. -one. Able to sneak in a goal, one minute, 17 seconds left, and both teams still have an opportunity to win. Tony, unexpected position off the kickoff. Oh my goodness, I don't think even he was expecting that one. We've seen a couple of close kickoffs. Finally, one converts the Eagles. Just need to hold on for 70 seconds and they'll be playing on into the bracket stage. But as I say it, the caster curse is real and Drift ties us at two. There's a goal scoring bonanza in the last 25 seconds. Back to a tight game with one minute remaining. And he's trying to start the clear. Whip by Eagles. He has a teammate to follow him up though on blocking that clear. Ripped off the wall. Pass over to Yeggs. Maybe rotating back. Demo onto Vault. And an over rotation by the Eagles might just score, be their end. Diaz follows up down into the goal, and it is barely blocked by the Eagles. Dangerous situation. Two seconds left. Eagles aren't out of it yet. A still has possession. Tried to get it over to a flying down Gababy, but. 
Hash just wasn't there. Now no worries. Over to Tony. Here the Eagles win in regulation. Gababy gonna clear it down and drift racing in, but he hits the crossbar. Gababy's follow-up. Oh, it's unfortunately saved by Yags, who was trying to clear out of the goal. The Barracudas just can't get out of their own way with five seconds left. One last final shot for a drift. Attempted a buzzer beater. It is cleared off to the side, but as long as the ball stays in the air, there's an opportunity for a goal. Almost, it bounces off into the crossbar, and we're heading into overtime again. Oh, and, off but, the kickoff! Okay. So much for overtime. Two seconds. That might hey, be a record. You know what? I, I'm not complaining. I'll take a two-second overtime over a ten-minute overtime any day of the week. Unless you're an Eagles fan. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. Unfortunately for them. That overtime goal will mean they are eliminated. But they gave Barracuda's Black everything they could handle. And you know, Jacob, going at it alone can only get you so far. If you want to increase your chance of success, you got to level up your TV skills. We saw that with the Barracudas. Once they kind of got away from that demo play style, the baby got back to trying to set up his teammates. They were able to survive and take down the Eagles. And Esports Tower really takes time to create teams of well-matched teammates. I'm going to give a shout-out to Coach Jake. And if you're watching, haven't checked out the Esports Tower clubs that you should. It is the fast track to rank up. So Barracudas Black lock in the top spot for Group A. And unfortunately, the Eagles, despite their best efforts against maybe the favorites of the whole thing, cannot take them down. They had two shots in overtime. Couldn't quite get it done. They will be eliminated. Up next, it is our final round-robin game. We got a pair of teams that are fighting for the bye. They're both in the bracket, but you never want to have to play that extra game, Jacob. We'll be back with Stingrays and Lynx to wrap up our round robin in the Esports Tower Club Championships for Rocket League right after this. Growing up in Riggins, we have certain rules we live by. Look both ways before crossing the street. Fishing stories get better the more you tell them. Small town life makes your life anything but small. Never work alone when you go hunting. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. It's the end of a good day's work in Idaho. Time to punch out. Time to check in and catch up. Time to remind ourselves that what we work for isn't a paycheck. It's to make the good things we have even better. So here's to your good day's work. Idaho's Central Credit Union. We believe money is a thing. It's not everything.
Welcome back into this week's broadcast of the Esports Tower Rumble in Rocket League. Continuing on in our Esports Tower Club Championship. It is our final round robin game before we get over to our bracket stage. Fish and Jacob here calling all up the action. It's the Stingrays and Lynx facing off. Now, a little bit different circumstances than our last game, Jacob, where one team had to win to stay alive. With that Eagles loss, it actually clinched the Lynx's spot in the bracket. However, these teams are playing for the very coveted bye. Three of the teams will get a bye in the first round of the bracket. One te two teams will have to play in that first quarter finals matchup. You don't want to have to play an extra game if you can afford to. No, even though we're wrapping up the round-robin games, these last few games have been anything but consequential. They've been securing a few teams' place in the bracket. Some of the teams today is going to be their last day playing. Unfortunately for the Eagles, that was the case for them. So very, very crucial to see who is able to secure at least a semifinal spot in the bracketed stage. If not, they're going to have to play a quarterfinals. So before we get into our final round-robin game and get the bracket all finalized, we do want to take a moment to congratulate all the Esports Tower Club members who have graduated from the clubs and have been offered scholarships across the country over the last three months. Esports Tower Club members have received over 3.9 million in scholarship awards. These students have not only worked hard on their in-game play, but have worked hard academically as well and have earned these scholarship opportunities. Players that receive these scholarships are talented, hardworking, and driven. We could not be more excited and proud to see all of the opportunities that these players are getting. Again, final round robin game of the club championship stingrays and links and even though there's no bracket spots on the line again both these teams are in they're just fighting for a buy in the first round they still need docs keys to the game to make sure they can lock in that buy they don't want to have to play that extra game docs keys presented by esports tower score pro advice at esportstower.com those are to create mistakes punish the overcommits, play the walls better and demo to disrupt that we maybe after that last series we put an asterisk on that last one because with yeah. all the demoing that the baby did, I think it disrupted his own team more than it disrupted the other team. Improve your game sense, improve your team play, improve your performance under pressure. You match with great players and professional coaches to help you rank up. Stingrays, Lynx, best of three, Jacob. Here we go for that coveted buy spot. Again, one less series. It makes the world of difference sometimes. If you're able to rest, you're not going to put anything out there for the other team to spot if you're working on something secret. It's a big series for both these teams despite not having the same stakes as our first series of the night. So we head down to the field ready for our first kickoff of game one. Not quite going either player's favor. Nano has to rotate back. You also see State was kind of a very key player for the Lynx this last week. So we're going to want to watch out and see what kind of plays he can bring to the table. While the ball is cleared, back over toward the Lynx's goal. State surveys the situation, is able to juke out one. Goes past two. YY is going to still be there. Now the steam race. Puts it in, he gets the goal, and the Stingrays strike first. I gotta say, Jacob, it must have been a nice Christmas for some of these esports tower players. This is the third person who somehow has a new controller. So I guess they're getting, you know, getting uh, tight. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, this is a trend, uh, trend continuation that we're seeing on from last week. Apparently, everyone trying to show their skills on a new controller right now. It's not going to make much of a difference, though, because it's still a pretty low-scoring game. As soon as I say that, Steenrays get their second goal. Why, why? Securing it. The, the new skills or maybe the, the excuses. If, you know, maybe the uh, the sticks are still a little bit uh, crisp. They're not as, uh, you know, loosened up from these hours and hours of playing. So maybe it's more of a, hey, you know, if, if I'm off, it's the new controller. It's not me. Remember, if I... If something goes wrong, I'm lagging, controllers, it's never my fault. Yeah, it, no. Every well, the, gamer knows that. The thing is, is that they're making it sound like it's a new modern controller, but I think it's more new to them. For all we know, they could be playing with a third-party Mad Cats N64 controller. You know, what a nightmare that's going to be. <laughs> that's only if you're at your friend's house and you're given the, the you know, see -through you get stuck Mad with, Cats Yeah, controller. you get stuck with the... We're taking such a trip down memory lane right now, but at this point in the game, ball is still being fought over by the Lynx, is trying to push it off toward the front post. YY passes it to Nano. Great breakaway shot toward the goal, and they're going to score their third. Yeah, I'm just saying, maybe not a coincidence that all of the Stingrays goals have come from the players who aren't stating they have a new controller. And Nano and YY have all of them greed, with just the assist to his name is... 
Boom Boy trying to get the links back in it. State is there as well, but why what? With an excellent defensive stand. And now Nano a chance to add. Maybe look for the hat trick, but it's stolen away right in front of him. State looking to recover. That's a nice dribble. It's gonna be stopped as he gets demoed in Stingray's territory. Ball hit back toward mid. Another demo onto State. Makes me wonder if the Steam Race might have been doing a little scouting and seeing how explosive a player State can be because he's getting taken out of the equation time and time again. I'll say, I don't know how much scouting they got to do when you get named uh, Esports Tower Rocket League Fall MVP like State just did a couple of weeks ago. Your name is going to be in everybody's mind whenever they play you, and I think that's why they're all over him right now. Is Boom Boy trying to clear it down. Nano is there. Ooh, nice little fake out. Unfortunately, Nano still recovers with the ball. State at least able to slow it down, but here comes Greed with that new controller. Looking for his first goal, but it's saved. Gotta blame the new controller. Old controller, he would have scored that every time. Unfortunately, Greed, new controller, high pain, sun was in my eyes. Not going to be able to find the goal opportunity there. Ball is heading back, though, toward Lynx's. YY is able to elevate up, stop that clear from going through. Now Nano taking possession, quick shot toward the goal, is able to juke out the goalie, Stingray's on to their fourth. Nano picks up a hat trick. And the Stingrays look well on their way to this game one win. Remember, winner of this guarantees a bye, and the loser will have to play in the lone quarterfinal matchup of the club championship bracket stage. And that extra game could mean the difference between going home being on to the next round, and so the Stingrays looking to try and avoid that extra game as YY kick by fight it. Odies is there. Green on that new controller, gonna take it up in the air. Can't quite get it over to Nano, and now the Lynx. Minute left, four goals. Nigh impossible, but not improbable, and we'll see if they can find at least one goal here to make this not a shutout. Lynxes have been struggling. Not only if they have a four goal deficit, but they haven't even been able to get one solitary shot on goal while YY just plays around them again, finding his second goal of the game. Steenrace now up to five. That will, uh, that will come as close to sealing it as, you know, we're allowed to say as casters with 50 seconds left. See what the Lynx have in store as Beauty's gonna go over into the corner. Green, though, is there to just they can't quite get another touch shot. The demo does come out. YY with the whiff. Here comes Doomboy, but he can't quite get it framed. So that one's turned away. Nano looking to push this up. Field gets it around one. Can't get around another, and the Stingray's lead just remains at five. Demo on to Nano. Uh, it looks like that's not going to be too consequential, especially if it's Steam Razor slow playing this to run out the timer. But hey, if it's right there, why don't you pick up your s another hat trick? YY's going to be able to find his, and Steam Rays go to six. YY and Nano off and off when the team needs them. And Steam Rays will pretty much lock up game number one. There's less time on the clock than goals the link to score, and that's about all you need to know. Nearly put in another one, but that one wouldn't have been hit the ground. And game one, unlike our last series, a stomp in favor of the Stingrays, and maybe that, hey, that bye, that rest week. Again, whoever is in that quarterfinals will play tonight. So if you're either of these teams, you're trying to avoid back-to-back -back games, Jacob, it looks like the Stingrays were saying, heck yeah, I do not want to have to play twice in a row. Yeah, they've already tasted defeat earlier in one of their first round robin matches for this tournament. And I think they've recognized, especially if, you know, we're looking at the coach's notes, a lot of the coach's notes for the Lynxes in particular is to try to kind of enable State, make it, get him to make the plays. But the Steen Race have kind of found out, hey, if we take him out of the equation before he can make any of these plays, then we're seeing absolutely no shots on goal go through for the Lynxes. So we'll see if they can tidy things up as we're ready to head into game number two. Steenrays at match point. Whoever wins this gets a bye and doesn't have to play in the quarterfinals match. Just goes straight on to semis. There is State off the kickoff. Is it going to go in? No. YY gets back. The ball just didn't have enough speed. And that's why, as he pointed out, Jacob, the coaches are talking about get State the ball, enable State, help set him up, and they can make plays all over the map. 
Unfortunately, that one just missed three. Trying to triple that one in. Can't quite fight it. A couple of demos and a nice bump from Nano. Another demo. And it's just like we saw the last series. No goals despite all these demos. I mean, sure, it makes the match a little bit spicy seeing all these demos, but just like Tabasco sauce, a little bit too much spice can be a bad thing if you just chug straight from it because at this point, we don't want to see the Steam Race fall into the same trap that the Barracudas did. In another demo in YY Shock. Excellent save by Fiotis as Gumi Boy gets just demoed in the net. The Steam Race, pure aggression right now is here comes a nice shot turned away. State trying to follow. Didn't have a great angle on it. But the ball doesn't end up bouncing behind Nano, so State. Nice little setup punch there. Can't quite find it. Fiotis up on the wall. Can he get it down to State? No, State just gets blown up. The Stingrays not letting them have anything in front of their own net. State to stop the clear at the midfield marker. YY runs right into him. Still a scoreless game, yet another demo brought out by the Stingrays. This point, the question is, doesn't really turn into anything. I don't quite think that's going to be the case. Two more demos traded back and forth between these teams. Off into the corner. And Lynxes have a bunch of opportunities to clear it back. Green going to go up, get a touch on it. State is there. And smartly elevates and with that touch it's off the crossbar but gooey boy is there and the links get their first goal and they have a lead with three minutes left in game two he was one of the main targets of all those demos too so must feel great for him to come back and be able to get the only stat that really matters a goal for the lynxes get a lead i mean this demo strategy has worked excellently defensively all that last series, the team is being demoed has struggled to score, but the team doing all the demos has also struggled. Nano with a nice little touch off the rear fender, but they over pursued. They left the net wide open, and the Lynx get a freebie. It's two to nothing. Halfway through the game, and now the Lynx is on their own snowball of momentum. Clear back in the corner. Demo on to Gree to clear out the goal. State tries the shot on goal. Just a bit too late to it. Does the scene race get a successful save? Another demo on to Goom. At this point, State now is going to try to set something up. Oh, he had him just barely missed. Demos are taking it. They're taking as many people out of the play as they say it. There's the first goal with the new controller. Greed coast to coast. Nice little bounce at the end there as well. The Stingrays get a goal. Two minutes left. Trying to even this one up, and then they can go on another demo spree. And uh, that might. Oh, it hits the crossbar. But why? Why is it? And just like that, in a blink of an eye. Steam Rays have equalized this match. We have just two minutes left. Quick shot by the Lynxes to try to take a freebie off of the kickoff. Pass back to Floaties, and it's gonna float right over him, unfortunately. Oh, they just almost sneak it in! Last minute save by the Steam Rays. Oh, nice little pinch there. Oh, the Gumi. Oh, the Gumi. But he can't quite find it. Ball's a little bit too high. Now Nano looking to maybe put the Stingrays ahead. Maybe for good, but it's saved. And Stingrays got to try to find some offense here. And they're looking to wrap this series up. Oh! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Doesn't happen, but that was a sick little play to get it past two people. Almost turned into a goal for him, but now it's going to be all decided in the final minute of the game. Pass back to mid state, trying to elevate up to redirect it, not going to find it. And a demo on to Nano. But Goom is able to keep it in the Steam Race half. Ah, nice flip there. Keeps the side control for the Lynxes gonna take it at this point I'm not sure there's a kind of a lot of not quite the fast pace of the game and a double commit on top of that I think we might be heading to overtime just got a hunch 18 
seconds left to see if your hunch is correct. Just boom over to state, wraps it around. Nano is right there. Final shot here, gonna go in favor of the Stingrays. Over to Nano, but a great save by Goom. Looks like your hunch is gonna be correct here, unless Floaties can make a play. Greed with the great save, ball still alive. Why, why? Floaties gonna pop it up as well. State ends up bumping him out of the way, and your hunch is correct, Jacob. One for one as we head to overtime here in game two. We kick off, the ball's just a little bit wide. We almost had our second overtime determined the very same way the first one was. This one is indeed gonna go past two seconds, but maybe not much longer than that, as the Lynxes are hungry for a goal. And Reed is gonna be the one to save it for the Steam Race, but Lynxes are now trying again. Now it's floating, gets the ball stolen by Nano. Could be a chance for a turnaround here. State. Over into the corner, YY waiting. Nice little touch there to get it around. Hit Floaties, hit the pop it up. Nano misses. Huge chance for the Lynx in front of the net, and Floaties does it. And we're heading to game three as the Lynx are victorious in overtime. Yeah, a great early kickoff in that uh, overtime really made the side control completely in favor of the Lynx. The scene race weren't able to clear it at all for that half minute, half minute to a minute of overtime. And so now that the Lynxes have fought back, it's like, I didn't just call out the overtime, Fish. I also told you the dangers of that demo-heavy strategy. We've seen two teams go to match point and then get a little bit lackadaisical about it. And it's been forcing them to go to game three. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the demo play style has really just stopped everyone from scoring goals. Is Both teams have struggled and then... One kind of slips in, and all of a sudden, if you're the demo team, you're ha you're a little bit you got to recover, you got to change your game plan. But here we go, game three. Again, winner gets a bye to the semifinals. Loser is up next, I believe, taking on the Mammoths. We'll have to see when the bracket is all finalized, but I believe that will be the game in the quarterfinals of our club championship bracket. And the loser of that quarterfinal will go home. So there's a lot on the line here for both these teams in this game. Three is Nano looking to start scoring early. But it just wraps it around the net, and it's State who has possession and a nice little shot. Nano barely makes the save. Replays off the wall above floaties. YY following close behind gets demoed, leaving it all to Greed, and Greed is stopped by a save, and Demo's being traded back and forth, but no goals to speak of quite yet. Had it in front. YY ripped a shot. It's wide. Great little demo there on the state. And oh no, the ball just rolls off the back of one of the members of the Lynxes. It's an own goal. We'll get credited to Nano and the Stingray strike first here in game three. opportunity for stay and he almost plays it around one last minute rotation from nano bailing out the steam race again Ooh, nice little touch there why why trying to set it up over to nano but that ball ricochets off the crossbar state now looking forward he's got two members in front of him gets it right into green couldn't quite get the rebound he's looking for gonna push yy out of the way Allows Goom to get it over to floaties, but unfortunately, the shot a little bit higher. And that happened to the game, and only one goal has been scored, and at that, it was just kind of a surprising goal. Both these teams have been matching each other pretty equally in terms of just base shots on goal and saves. Floaties doesn't really have anyone to pass to, so unfortunately, he kind of throws it over to a Stingray. Almost is able to recover it into a shot on goal for the Lynxes, but now Nano is going to be able to push it back toward midfield with the follow-up by Greed. They get their clear. Will it turn into a second goal? Luckily, at least right now, and one is saved, so the other shot goes wide, and by all three Lynx being in the same area, looks like they're able to get the ball clear just barely. Finally, State. Pops it up over to float. He's looking for that pass. But Green with the intercept. Takes a shot. Boom. Nice save. 
Stingray still has the pressure. All in front of the net. Greed kind of caught flat foot. It does corral the ball. Can't take a shot. Man, I'm going to whip around. Pop it on net. Not quite enough speed. Greed one more try. Turn away. Why, why? His shot does go high on the net and just padding the save stats at this point on the links. None of those shots were really ever in danger of scoring. YY able to stop a shot on goal from the Lynxes, keeping the Lynx team race in this narrow lead. Demo in midfield. On to floaties. You know, keeping the side control floaties freshly respawned. Is trying to save it. But, oh, there's no one there, though. Oh, that looked like it would have been a perfect opportunity. Scene Ray still left searching. They might have one here. Almost are able to sneak it in, but Goom is going to find another save. So it is still just a one goal game. Nano. They make it a two goal game just like that. Nice little solo goal. And the Stingrays are now 90 seconds away from locking in that bye. Did the Lynx have a comeback? It starts with a demo off the kickoff. Goom bounces it off the wall. Felonis puts it in. And these kickoffs, the Lynx have been deadly on them. And they strike there to make it a one goal game again. Kickoff. Slightly in favor of the Lynxes, but State, fresh off that kickoff, gets Demo. Lead for him, he's got his teammates to try to get back some side control. Unless Greed with this great air dribble is just going to push it all the way back over to the Lynxes. YY has to stop this play by State here. Along with Nano, they're going to play off their own backboard and clear it off to the side. Driving this down to just the final minute. Stingray's still leading one. Here for the Lynx. They did get a demo on the Nano, but not quite able to find anything. Why, why? Kind of pushes State out of the way. Greed looking to end it, but couldn't quite do it. Ball gets cleared all the way back. Lodi's racing down. Going to get a great demo on the Nano. Why, why? Wins the race to the ball. State going to try and pop it off the wall. Look for his own rebound. Can't quite find it. Either can Greed. 30 seconds left, Nano and Green looking to put this game away, but a great save right at the line. Keeps the links in it. A chance for the Lynx to score goal might have just been stopped by that very crucial block by Green. He's going to drive it in and secure the victory for his own team. A quick block turns into a goal, and now the Stingrays, I'm pretty sure, have clinched it. Seconds left. Lynx probably need a goal right about now to have any chance of a miracle kickoff. That ball will get turned away, and the Stingrays will lock it up. They will move on to the semifinals alongside Barracuda's Black, while the Lynx will be forced that quarterfinals game that is coming up right away. Well, if you want to be seen by expert college recruiters, talk directly to esports industry insiders like pro athletes, team general managers, and game producers, then join the club. Esports power players get insider access to industry insights, and with our featured rumbles, recruiters are taking notice as well. It's a great way to, store, to score exposure if you're looking to start your path to pro or land a collegiate scholarship. So the Stingrays take down the links and finalize our bracket. Again, Stingrays will have to buy. The Lynx will have to play in that low quarterfinal game, taking on the Mammoths. As our club championship bracket is set, Jacob, and we'll see if the buy will pay off or if the Lynx can make a stand and just advance to the semifinals themselves. Our quarterfinals coming up next. Lynx Mammoths, who's moving on to the semifinals next week and who is going to see their club championship dreams come to an end? Find out after this. It's the end of a good day's work in Idaho. Time to punch out. Time to check in and catch up. Time to remind ourselves that what we work for isn't a paycheck. It's to make the good things we have even better. So here's to your good day's work. Idaho's Central Credit Union. We believe money is a thing. It's not everything.
Growing up in Riggins, we have certain rules we live by. Look both ways before crossing the street. Fishing stories get better the more you tell them. Small town life makes your life anything but small. Never work alone when you go hunting. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Tower Rumble in Rocket League. The Rocket League Club Championships for the fall season are in full force. The bracket is set. By the end of the night, we'll have four teams left standing. We just saw the Lynx drop their game to the Stingrays, and that left them here in the quarterfinals. So they'll be taking on the Mammoths as the fourth and fifth place teams from our round robin. Fish and Jacob here calling all of the action. Our quarterfinals will move to best of five. So a little bit more room for error, and now we'll get a chance to see who will stay alive and who will join the Eagles, unfortunately, seeing their club championship dreams end tonight, Jacob. Yeah, they were the first of the two eliminated. We're going to find out who the second one is in this coming game. Mammoths and Lynxes, who the Lynxes are telling us, despite that last loss that they had against the Stingrays, they're still feeling pretty confident that they can move forward in the bracket. So we'll see if that confidence is well placed. Mammoths have also been a team that have been struggling. They missed out on a on top seed in Group B by losing in overtime to the Barracudas White. So they've had to go up against top teams as well. So just at this point, trying to take it one match at a time, see how far you can advance in that bracket. Speaking of the bracket, should be able to take a look at it and see where everybody ended up again. We know Barracudas Black and Barracudas White again. They were all the teams that started today. The Eagles as well, not able to make it. Here is your bracket, though. As we said, there was that last buy up for grabs. The Stingrays picked it up. So Barracudas Black, Stingrays, and Barracudas White all advancing to the semifinals next week. The Lynx and the Mammoths get ready for this quarterfinal showdown. Winner doesn't really have anything easier. Thanks, but they got to play Barracudas White, who have been a dominant team, though. I think they've been subject to some slow starts. So we'll have to see. Maybe a winnable matchup. As you said, both these teams, despite being... Lower seeded than everyone else who got a buy, feeling a ton of confidence. And we'll see whose confidence pays off and who maybe, unfortunately, will be sitting from home saying, hey, I could have beat that team if only I had gotten the job done earlier this week. But let's hop in to our quarterfinals, Lynx and Mammoths. Remember, best of five now, not best of three like the round robin. So, again, a little bit more room for air. You can drop the first team without being worried. Let's hop in and find out who stays alive and who's going home as we head into our quarterfinal matchup. And down to the first kickoff. Free Ink is going to be able to take that one. Joined by Area Not Sicko. First time we've seen the Mammoths tonight. Free Ink is going to keep a bit of side control going. Clear attempted. Stopped in mid again. 
Another clear attempt by the Lynxes. Still not going to find anything as they're easily answered back by the Mammoths and almost spiked down into the goal by Freaky. Booty's able to make a nice save. Not sicko. Retreating. Bodhi takes a shot. Give me a save though. And now, ooh, nice demo. Should maybe open things up a little bit here. Is a bit of a double commit there from the Lynx. They're able to make it work right in front of the net. And the state just can't quite get turned around. And now we've seen this story before an overcommit. This time that leads to a goal. Great little play there by the Lynx. Turn that one away. Area tries to pinch it off the wall. We're centering. State now with the next play. Nice pass one. Has control of it and almost sneaks it in. He is going to do it all by himself. Links is go to a two-goal lead. Unfortunately, Sicko ends up hitting that one in. So an own goal credited to stay. He might have scored if Sicko doesn't make a play. So you can't fault him there. It's one to nothing link. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, Floaties and State take each other out, and that'll get possession right over to the Mammoths. Not sick of not able to capitalize. One goal lead, excuse me, onto the Lynxes. We'll see if State can widen that up, or if one of his teammates who also can make plays, Floaties kind of been an all around good player with a save, a shot on goal. He's going to try for another shot on goal, but it gets stopped by Free Ink. Back toward the Lynxes. Open into the corner. Around the corner. Shot placed way back into mid. Okay, nice little punch. But it is a good day by area. Bodie's picked up one demo on the area. And now Boom will just kind of hand the ball over to Sicko, trying to look for a clear. Not able to find it. Oh, bad back pass by State. This could be a disaster, but somehow. Lodi's in a one-on-two, able to make a fantastic little save. Almost halfway through the first match. Still anyone's game. Especially... Look like they were... Flick is actually just going to push it off into the corner. State is going to take control of it. Off the backboard, an attempted follow-up. Double commit on the save from the Mammoths going to be enough for them to still put pressure on to the Lynxes. State trying to clear again. Plays around one, but not around two. This ball gets passed back to Goon. Trying to find another shot on goal, but with the demo on to Floaties, Lynx is still waiting. Cool area. Had a nice little shot. Turned away. Great defense here by the Lynx. Just under two minutes left in game one of our quarterfinal. The one nothing lead. Area trying to change that though, but I'll take a little bit in front of them. They actually drop it off for free. Sick goes there as well, but everybody hits the crossbar. If only the goal were a bit wider. The Mammoth might have found a goal. They'll try one more time, even with the demo. State able to make a nice save and get it out of harm's way. State grounds the ball, but isn't able to keep playing. Nice elevation up from area. Set it up for a teammate, not sicko. Shot on goal, saved by floaties. A lot of fighting still in the mid. Plays it around, all of them is free. Ink. Unexpected shot on goal. Mammoth's now in the lead. It's a great steal. Gets around two already, and that's a tough spot for Goom to be in. Just guessed a bit low. With 70 seconds on the clock, Mammoth. High up game number one. Off the kickoff, going to go in the Mammoth's favor. Area is there, one punch. And not Sicko plays the rebound perfectly, and all of a sudden the Mammoths have the lead. Back to back plays, not Sicko rising to the occasion. Being a star player for the Mammoths. One minute left for the Lynxes to respond. They only had two shots on goal this entire game. One of them did go in. But at this point, they've been having a hard time clearing it out for themselves and working on from there. Area redirect back toward the goal, almost scoring the third for the Mammoths. Lynx's look also a bit defensive-minded. A lot of bunching up in front of their own goal. 
Oh, oh, they almost had that estate and just been able to make contact with the ball. Fortunately, went flying past, and it remains two to one. 30 seconds left here. Lynx trying to maybe force overtime or maybe have a goal scoring uh, explosion of their own. State can't quite get a nose on it. Boom is there, though. Puts it right in front of the net. Lands on the hood of Not Sicko, and it's cleared away. Maybe the final chance for the Lynx in this game. One state. Off the wall in front of the net, Goom is there, but it's high and just off the crossbar. And I think that, unfortunately, Jacob, will see you game number one for the Mammoth and let the Lynx go coast to coast with the ball. And it's not looking good. Lynx is trying to keep it airborne to keep the game going, but they're not going to be able to quite do that. That means the Mammoths get the first win. And overall, it seemed like the Lynxes were off to a more explosive start. I mean, you had that great solo play by State earlier on in kind of the first half of this match. But ever since then, it was just a real struggle for them to clear. I don't see a lot of these players playing off the walls when they're clear. And that's just allowing the ball to very easily be answered back by the Mammoths. So might, might want to try playing off some angles a bit more if we head into Game 2. Yeah, with the best of five, I feel like game one definitely could be more of a feeling out process in the round robin. I mean, you win game one, you're on match point, so it was a little bit more go, go, go. So maybe both teams just kind of seeing how the other one wants to play. And we'll get ready for game two of our quarterfinals. Mammoth struck first. Can the Lynx have a response, or can the Mammoths maybe look for our first sweep all night? Both our round robin games went the distance. We have five games in store here, or will it be a different result? We'll kick off game two and find out a state to kick off. But there's no response, and now not Sicko actually in a one on one in front of the net, but it just pushed away. Next opportunity for a clear by the Lynxes. Slight tap by not Sicko. Not going to turn into a clear, but a bounce off of one of the Lynxes. Very quick one is going to push it back to mid at least. Looks like the Lynxes are still maintaining side control, setting it up with the centering. Noxico still being there to provide enough of interference to keep this tied zero apiece. No possible, and it bounced off the post. The Lynx had a couple of those close, close goals in game one that maybe would have changed the series. They almost had the first goal there. And Lodi is just going to get the demo. State just kind of going to punch it down, see where it ends up in the area. A nice little play off the side wall. Goom is there, takes the shot, and then gets taken out of the play. The area will make a nice save, and after a minute in, we'll remain at 0 0 in game two. Shot on goal by Floaty, saved by Not Sicko, follow up from State. And demo onto Free Ink. Not Sicko with the breakaway shot on! I don't even know if that was breakaway, that was more of just a clear. And a bit of over rotation by the Lynx as they pay for that dearly. Fortunately, the Lynx can't get back in time. Just once again over Goom, who has come oh so close to saving two of not sick of a shot, but hasn't been able to save either. And the Mammoth go up first here, but there's still plenty of time left for the Lynx to tie this one up. Right now, though, they gotta get this ball away from Area and Company. And Floaties goes up, one touch. Trying to get around Sicko, and that's a way to do it. Just take him out of the play. Open opportunity. Oh! What a goal to tie the game! Just when you think the Lynxes are struggling, State can come out of nowhere calculated. Oh, what a nice redirect. That is so beautifully aimed. We talk about it all the time. These kids... I know they're not in college yet when they are. It wouldn't shock me if they're engineers, math majors. They know every angle. That is an impossible angle to form with the crossbar and sneak it in. Absolutely insane. And the Lynx looks maybe for another one. Not quite able to find it though. State, a nice clear. We'll see who wins the race of the ball. It's going to be area. Floaty's just going to back off. moves in to try to play it off the wall. Keeps the pressure going for the Lynxes. And the centering goes through and it's a textbook play. State driving it in for his second of this game. It's that man again. Anytime this is the Lynx, it's usually State. Great setup by his teammates. 
It's two to nothing, Lynx now. They're looking to tie this series up. Let's see what Area Company can do. Ryan, after striking first, to slow down the Lynx and stay. Oh my gosh! No way for the hat trick. There was a double commit by the Mammoths, and that double commit left the goal wide open. None of them really had a chance of even getting to the ball since they were so far back. State capitalizing on that. And it's something that the... It's something that the Lynxes definitely have in their cap is that you can't count them out until the last moment. The State is such an explosive player lying in wait for the mistakes to be made by the other team. And it's not just all state. I mean, that was a great bounce pass by Goom, putting it right where state needs it to be. This one might just be a solo play, though. State with his fourth goal of the game. Pretty much putting the links to the driver's seat here in game two. Two minutes, 11 seconds left in game number two. Next kickoff. One by not sicko and a quick play by area almost capitalizes on that. It's going to be a save from Goom. Going to be able to center it, but still keeping possession. Area runs right into one of the links in the corner, and ball is still stuck in that corner. Lodi's denied his clear. Follow up. Oh, almost just up into the corner. Could have been a very crucial goal for the Mammoths to get some momentum back to the Mammoths looking for a goal. Still got a decent amount of time. Usually that 30 seconds at goal mark is kind of where you're comfortable in Rocket League. So three goals, 90 seconds, not out of the realm of possibilities. But this could be another one if Goon could just center it up. Unfortunately, could not. That is burning Precious Clock as well. Is not Sicko going to pop that one above the net? Takes kind of an awkward hop away. And now the chance for the Lynx to extend their lead. Not Sicko, though. Able to make a great save. Boom in the corner. Looking to put it right where maybe State can get it. But a great job by Free Ink. Keeping it out of his harm's way. But there's only 60 seconds left. The ball's on the wrong side of the field. It's a great dribble by area. A pass over to not Sicko. I don't know. Still time for the Mammoths to bring it back. Passes it as he got bumped off by State. If he had held that ball just a second longer. That wouldn't have been a goal. The Mammoths, you said, will have a decent amount of time. When you're trying to hunt two goals in the final 60 seconds, you're never too comfortable. But still enough time to kind of play their game and see what happens here. If there's 40 seconds left, and it's a great job by Aria to keep this ball on the orange side. Off the backboard. Attempted redirect. State has it. Almost another shot towards goal. Oh my goodness. Aria tried to get a save, was credited with one. But the ball takes the worst bounce over. Aria almost has it. Oh. If area, maybe it just leaves a little bit more boost there. Driven the ball up a little higher, it wouldn't. I think area and the game just assumed that the save had been made. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. That goal from State in his fifth of the game. Pretty much seal it here. Area kind of kind of hold on to the ball and aren't quarterfinals will be tied at one and basically reset into a best of three. As soon as this ball is allowed to touch the ground, everyone will keep it alive. Maybe another chance for State to add a free goal. He was actually racing in. Probably would have found his sixth goal if there was more time left. But, I mean, we talked about it. That's the Lynx's game plan. Get State the ball. I mean, you got to give a shout-out to his teammates, though. Four of his five goals were assisted. Three to Gumi, one to Floaties. It's not like he's doing it all himself. But a fantastic job, nonetheless, for the Lynx to tie up this series. 
And it's not just the amount of shots on goal that State can make as well, but it's how much side control that they can have in the game. The Lynx was telling us that was one of their strategies is making sure that they have possession of the ball for long enough and just keep on putting the pressure onto their opposing team. That rotational mistakes start to come out from the other team. State is really good at spotting those out and making those split-second decisions, being able to know this is when I need to shoot the ball into the goal. And they pay dividends for them there. We basically reset this best of five and do a best of three. Game three. Who will put themselves on match points? Will it be the Mammoths or will it be the Lynx? Quarterfinals of our club championship for the fall season in Rocket League are about to kick off game number three here. And right off the kickoff, it's Goom able to launch that ball all the way down into the corner. Gets a great steal away from area as well. Where's State? There he is. Nice disruption. Two members on the ball, not quite able to score. Goom shot bounces across the net, and it's 0-0 zero to zero still. Pass over to area. That's the play pass two, and is he going to even be able to get past one? Answer back by the Lynxes. Goom is dribbling it up the field. That back over the area again. Oh, and I, I don't quite know what happened there, but a little bit of coordination mistake by the Mammoths. They run into each other. Passes fall apart. And now Lynx has had control again. And, oh, got it around a couple, but you didn't expect Sicko behind him. Here comes State, but oh, he just went, he went high. The ball went low. And the Mammoths can breathe out a sigh of relief early on here. So we're still tied at zero. Nice demo on the floaties, but I don't think much is going to happen here. That ball's going to awkwardly trapped in the corner. And it will be kind of cleared away and out of harm's way. Area plays it by one. Almost by two, but it is deflected off into the corner. Ball up by not sicko. Not going to find a shot on goal. They rotate up too far, and Lynxes get their first. Hey, that shot goes out and there's nobody home. I mean, you can see the next closest player is Floaties. That ball goes in and Goom picking up his first of the series. The Lynx right first here in game three. See if the Mammoths can answer back and avoid this one from getting out of hand like game two did. Pass back over to area, almost turns into a goal. Follow up by Free Inc. is going to capitalize on it. We've still got a game here. One apiece. Great little job. This is kind of what the Mammoths were trying to do last time when they all pushed forward. This time, ball goes in the back of the net. There's no chance for a counterplay for the Lynx. Kickoff, which the Lynx played really well in their series against the Stingrays. Haven't seen the Venice as explosive on the kickoff in this series, so it still does go down to the blue side before State finds a member of the Mammoths to kind of clear that back. Not Sicko with a great demo on to State. There's Free Ink in the corner, able to stop that one. Goom gets a touch on it. Area's demoed, and Goom looking for his second. But Sicko able to make a great save. State with the follow up. Not quite able to hit it hard enough, and the possession goes to the Mammoths. Kept in place by area pass to Natsiko. Shot gets pushed back into the corner. Lord tries to clear, but Free Ink beats him too. It steals it away. Floaties now trying again. Gonna play it off the wall this time and is able to sneak it by one. Now State with the control again. Ball doesn't take the bounce. He won it off the wall though. One of the mammoths got a tap on that to push it back to the Lynx's goal. Now we're over halfway through game number three. Team's still tied, and Lynx is looking for their clear. Ooh, the Lynx gets the clear. State kind of stealing that ball away from Goom, however. And that hands possession right back. Floaties in the net, able to stop not Sicko's attempt. Area goes up. Ball going to bounce right in front. State and free and collide. Water falling down. But an excellent save by Floaties. And now State, nice little dunk. Does he have the rebound? He doesn't. Goom does, but Area there for the save. Now Floaties keeping his possession alive for the Lynx. State with a nice little chip shot, but it's off the crossbar. And the Mammoths keep this game tied. 90 seconds left. Oh, 
away, fallen out of the air, and isn't able to play it off the ground at all. The Lynxes now have possession back, but Floaties gets demoed, meaning Goom's gonna have to be successful on this clear. Free ink, quickly answering it back. Demo onto area. Now we're back to a bunch of fighting and contesting in mid for control of the ball. One minute left, and neither team showing too much of an advantage going into it. And have another overtime game on our hands. We've seen several of those already today. We'll see if we got another one, or if either of these teams can avoid the golden goal situation. And as Goom takes a shot, doesn't quite land. State. Try to clear that one back, but not Sicko is there for the fantastic uh, save. Lodi's tries to get under him and actually will just straight up demo him. And with 30 seconds left, the ball's kind of near midfield. Finally, the Lynx get a nose on it to hit it over to the blue side. Not Sicko peppers a shot. On to the Lynx's goal. Boy is right there and able to save. 50 50 is going to send the ball off onto the other side of the field. Time does increasingly look like the way that we are going to go. One last attempt at a buzzer beater by Free Ink whiffs on that shot. So now we do head into overtime. I think I'm gonna pop it up. Goom with a great little touch on it. Chance here for Floaties to end this game right here, right now. Gonna set it up for his teammate. And not Sicko clears it away. It looks like the Lynx are ready for it. They had already retreated. Not allowing a cross map goal in overtime here. Now they get more pressure. Varia should be able to get a nose on it, and they will. Wall oh, is he going to drop down in midfield. Varia plays it off the wall. Got one hanging out on the near post. He gets bumped out of the way, but still enough for the Lynxes to defend against that attempt by the Mammoths. Can Floaties. No, almost looked like he almost juked out the goalie, but nope, not quite. And we're about a minute into overtime, and things looking to be as just a bunch of a stalemate as it's been all so far. Despite that great shot attempt by Goon Boy, bounces off the crossbar, and we're back where we started. Not Pico takes the shot. Goon able to make the save. There you go. One touch, not Sicko flying in, but. Oh, Aria might have a chance here. It's off of Goom right on that goal line. Panic coming out from the Lynx. They kind of run into each other, but now State with possession, but he's tied up there at midfield. Not able to get a shot on net. Goom and Natsuko battle for it. Natsuko over to Free Inc. But possession was being given right back. State has a chance, but he loses the ball, but Aria doesn't make a play on it. Luckily, Aria able to recover. And the Mammoths avoid disaster. like he wanted to try to pass it to somebody, but instead it goes back into the hands of the Mammoths. 50 quite for either team again. State one shot off the ball, falls back to the ground. And a whiff on the follow-up by the Lynx is another shot from State, saved by Freeing. Now two minutes into this overtime. Ball kind of takes a weird hop, and Floaties gets it. Oh my goodness. Sicko and Goom just kind of get tied up, and I think the Holy Cow reaction is the best one, because that just looked weird. Well, whether it was a goal we were expecting or not, the Lynxes will sure take it. That moves them off to match point. We still have possible two games left in this best of five. That seemed to be the one where the team struggled the most. I mean, you look at the the you look at the overall stats. I mean, yes, total shots on goal very much in favor of the Lynx, but the side control was actually in favor of the Mammoths. So there was a lot of fighting in midfield that ultimately decided the game. Yeah, I mean that was. I mean that game kind of was really kind of fit the bill for everything else we had today, right? It had a lot of, over, it had overtime. It's had a lot of demolitions. It had a crazy goal. I mean, this is kind of how all of our series have gone. As you said, the side control kind of 
the opposite of the total shots. But, I mean, again, that's kind of how I feel like both these teams are playing. The Mammoth's kind of more calculated with their shots. They're waiting. They're waiting. The Lynx just get, get State the ball and let him rip. But I will say, I think it was Goo who actually kind of took over that game with multiple shots. Floaties had the game winner. We'll see if the Lynx can win the series. Game four, Lynx on match point. Winner goes to the semifinals next week against Paracoon White. Loser has to go home for the fall season. Who will take it home, or will we have a game five on our hands? Let's hop in and find out. Quick shot by Floaties, not done from his star play in overtime last. He's gonna get an early goal for the Lynxes. Just a great little shot there. Puts it on net. The Lynx have a one nothing lead. See if the Mammoths can rally here as Goom off the wall. State able to hit it in. Looks like Area had a bit of an issue there, so might have to have a pause here. It looks like the Mammoths are down a player. Never mind, looks like they say play on. So we'll keep going here with the Lynx holding on to a one nothing lead. down a player or it might just be I think it might just be an overlay issue yeah there's still three people yep. on the field it's always good to find out that we are still evenly matched and area is going to prove that with the shot on the goal saved by who that the man is R3 and the goal for state makes it two nothing links again looking to make it to those semifinals and just a great goal by who else in state Great setup by Floaties as well. Again, there are three players for the Mammoth. Just looks like we do have a bit of a uh, overlay issue. As you can see, all three blue names are there. So it is a three on three. Mammoths are at full strength. Back into the corner. Area. Ball goes right over area, can't make any sort of play on it. It's gonna be up to free ink. Goom, quick shot back towards center. No follow up for the Lynxes. Now the Mammoths on the counter attack are gonna be able to sneak one in thanks to area. It's a great little clear here and we've seen teams get overzealous. It, it feels like all of our series today have had three things, Jacob. They've had a ton of demos, at least one overtime game, and a handful of goals that are really just one team over committing, and that one fits that bill. So I think we can check off all of the boxes now for this quarterfinal to be counted as a real series. Not sick of oh, another shot. Oh. Why not another overcommit goal to add to the checklist? Yeah, I, I think you already mentioned it, but it sure applies doubly here because there was two times that the Lynx has just bit off more than they could chew. And now the Mammoths have tied it back up again. Just like that, the Mammoths erase the two goal deficit, as you said. It's two to two, and everything's basically reset here. Lynx looking to win this and avoid a game five. Move on to those semifinals next week. Floaties! Oh, just didn't have enough speed. They just put the demo on the stick out. The ball's going in the wrong way, however. It'll cause the Mammoths to get possession and free ink just. Pop shelf, yes please! 3-2, man. Oh, how the turns have tabled in this match because despite a two-goal lead early on, Mammoths now find themselves in the lead. Spreading down evenly between all the team members as well, each of them has gotten one of those three goals. Sicko taking possession, pushes it to mid. Not able to keep the play going, otherwise that's great elevation! That sets it up for area, the Mammoths coming alive! Ooh, oh, okay, maybe, so. maybe, maybe I was a bit too premature. There he is again, who else but State puts it in. It's three to three. Three minutes, just under three minutes left here in game four. Three to three. Who will break the tie? That is the question on everyone's mind. Is oh, State had a great angle, but just couldn't quite get to the ball. He's on a demo spree. But man, this will get possession. Soft shot toward the goal, saved by Goom. He's gonna get demoed though. His free is 
after him with a force and double commit on the attempted save means that mammoths can get back into the lead. Great little play by area, not sicko, just kind of going with the push from behind. Hey, area gets credit, but if not, Sicko doesn't just push him in. There's no goal, and it's four to three, but something tells me the scoring is not done in this game. See if once again the Lynx have an answer. State is right there. Oh, area barely saves Floaty's shot. And the man is hold on to the lead, but they're not out of it yet. As State rips one, it's wider than that. Finally, they have some breathing room. Off the wall, back to not Sicko. Demo. It's going to open up a chance for the Lynx to try to clear. Will they get demoed back in response? Because they're still defending. Sicko shot way up high to the backboard area. Goes flying past that. And he got free and holding down the fork defensively. He's going to get demoed for his troubles. And a follow up goes wide from the Lynxes. Now they have an opportunity to equalize this up. There by Free Ink. Minute 30 left. And it's clinging to a one goal lead in an elimination game for them. Natsiko trying to give his team some push and can't quite find it. State makes the save. Kept alive by Free Ink though. Now it's Floaty's turn. Nice bump out of the way on the area. Floaty's able to take it all the way down. Looking for a teammate, but nobody's there. And he just kind of hands the ball over. is going to have, not going to be able to get to it as the shot gets deflected right before he is able to take a shot. Now State, eyeing his opportunity, perfectly aimed. Natsiko is hanging out in front of the, he's going to actually get demoed by floaties. But they're back up to full strength, going to play off the wall to secure their first clear. And Area holding in to keep the lead for the Mammoths. I don't know if it's going to be enough. There's still 30 seconds left with a lot of pressure being put on by the Lynxes. But that's still a great save. Sickle makes another one. But can he make a second? There's Area. 20 seconds. Oh, Free Ink just doesn't have enough boost to get down there. That would have sealed the game and sent us to a game five instead. Eight seconds left. The Lynx are going to get one more shot at the goal. If they can get possession, they're kind of fumbling the ball around. Area's going to clear it. It's kept alive, though, somehow, some way by Goom. Oh, it's still kept alive by State. Somehow the links are there. The shot. Oh, can anybody get there? No. It looked like maybe they were going to make a hero play, but the Mammoths win it. And much like the rest of the series today, we're going to go the distance here. This time we go to game five. Well, the shots on goal perfectly divided between both teams. Lynx is looking like they were going to push that into overtime, but one final drive by the Mammoths is going to make each series go the maximum possible time that it could have gone. Our two best of threes went to a game three. Our one best of five today is going to go to a game five. So it's been one of the most competitive games that we have seen here at Esports Tower. No sweeps to speak of whatsoever. Yeah, and there's everything on the line for both these teams. Winner stays alive, gets to come back next week for the semifinals and potentially a chance at the Esports Tower Ball Club Championship. Loser will have to wait until the winner and go into a hibernation because they will be out of time. Here we go. Game five, Mammoth, Lynx. Who's it going to be? Who's going to get it done? Let's hop in and find out. As we kick off game five with State. Taking a shot, and just wide of the net off the kickoff. They're chasing after the ball by the Mammoths. But none of them get an aqua to tap on it. The ball was pretty slow and easy for the Lynx to clear off. Set up for their own shot on goal by Floaty, saved by Area. Been a key goalie for the Mammoths this series. Nice little demo there, Area. Great defensive plays. Looking for an offensive one. They can't quite find it, so it will be kept alive. Boom, not quite able to get a touch on it. Areas there once again. But 
bait and clear it away and set up his teammate in a great position. Gets it around one. Can't quite get it around Sicko though. There is a demo on to State in the back line. And that will kill the Lynx's possession. Now they gotta be on defense. Ooh, great save by Goom to keep it tied. Off the wall. Ooh, unable to follow up. Floaties demo onto area. A little bit of a flick. Up and over. Gonna be able to get it away from freeing, however. Nice. The redirect from State. Tries to dunk it down into the goal. Doesn't get it. Floaties is there. In the corner. Oh, just overdrives it, but he bumps it go out of the way. State trying to fight in a one-on-two and ends up getting a great touch on it. Back to Floaties, the back pass to State, but he can't quite get it over area. And we remain tied, and this goes like the rest of our series. I believe both game threes went to overtime, so the players better strap in, because something tells me we probably have overtime on our hands here as well, Jake. A little bit more of a bold prediction to make this early in the match, but it could very well come true. State's going to left chasing after the ball. Stops the clear. And, oh, that was a nice follow-up by Floaties, but not Sicko. He's staying in there. Here we with one go. shot. Not finding it. Easier for the Lynx. Oh, that will kill the Lynx's chance right there. State sent to the respawn. Nice little attempt there, though, is Sicko able to back pass it over to Freak. So Freak wasn't ready. Off the respawn state! Over to Floaties to front of the net! Oh, Goom just couldn't get in range. State flying in off the respawn nearly got the first goal of the game. But instead, it looks like it's going to be area, and they'll just dribble that one home. Another over commit, and the Mammoth strike first. Area sets it up for themselves. One shot toward the goal. No one there to defend. Mammoths now hold a narrow lead, one to zero. That's what they wanted by in the last game. They can maintain control. Both these teams though have fallen victim to over rotations and leaving their own goal open. So we'll see if that comes back to bite either of them. The most important game of them all. Trying to get it on net, not able to. It's not Sicko now. Pass one, pass nearly two, but Doom will kind of pop it over it. There he is there to just keep the pressure on. The man is trying to limit the chances the Lynx have. The minute 40 left in game five. Free Inc. Maybe even had eyes on a second goal, but two great saves. One by the crossbar, one by Doom. Keeps the Lynx alive, and State just going to muscle that one in. It'll get credit to Floaties. But it was a combo hit there to tie the series. That was a nice bit of split second. Thinking by Floaties to slam on the break, keep the ball from getting away, put it in a good position for State to get the equalizing shot. Now we're just 90 seconds left in this match. Both teams tied up one apiece. No rules that you can't use your teammate as a battering ram is Goom. Out of nowhere, the Lynx scored twice in 20 seconds, and they had to lead in game five. Doom hasn't been the hugest goal scorer for the Lynxes, but when he gets a goal, it can sure count. This kickoff, oh, that's a great cheat by oh. Floaties off the kickoff, almost turning that into a goal. Great save by Area. You highlighted as one of the great defensive players for the Mammoth. Fortunately, they don't need great defense. They need offense right now. 60 seconds left. Spot in the semifinals on the line. Area gets bumped off the dribble. Free Inc. is there. Sicko trying to corral it. Can't quite do it. Area at least gets a hood on it. To save that ball from going in on an open net. Free Inc. doesn't get the clear, but he does get the demo on the floaties. That ball's stolen away. State trying to put this game away, but unfortunately the Mammoth will have possession here. 30 seconds left. Still an opportunity for the Mammoths to tie this up, drive it into another overtime this series. Oh, double commit there. Ugh, it 
don't know if they can keep extending this play. State, good shot at the ball, and a nice clear from the Lynxes. That could be the clear to win it. They're still in the lead, just five seconds left. It needs to be grounded, and the Lynxes win. Oh, the boat takes a split second bounce at the very end. Oh, still alive. Oh, and a nice little ground there. That's going to do it for the Lynxes. They're going to move on. Fortunately for the Mammoths, that's the end of their journey today. Links do indeed move on. As you said, the Mammoths fall journey will end today, but a very well played series. But the Lynx, they rally, and a congratulations to them. Well, if you want to be seen by expert college recruiters, talk directly to esports industry insiders like pro athletes, team general managers, and game producers, then join the club. Esports tower players get insider access to industry insight with our featured rumbles. Recruiters are taking notice as well. It's a great way to score exposure if you're looking to start your path to pro or land a collegiate scholarship. Four teams remain heading into next week. Barracuda's White, Barracuda's Black, Stingrays, and the Lynx all will duke it out for a shot at the Fall Club Championship. But before we end today, we do have our player of the game to hand out. I mean, a lot of deserving players who are... You thinking of, Jacob, as your player of the game tonight? Uh, I'm thinking mostly of area, though. I, I think there was a player, if you were to talk about a player that all around could make clutch saves and be able to turn, uh, be a great offensive player when the time arose. I mean, I know it can probably go over to state two, you know, just being general MVP, and he no doubt has some great plays, but area would kind of be my sleeper pick. No, I think that's, that's definitely, I think, a solid pick. As you said, I think state's a... Uh... You know, an easy cast or cop out answer here because he absolutely dominated, and it's time to find out who our player of the game is going to be. <laughs> and it yeah. will be State. So Again, I think every point you made about area was correct, but this is the easy pick because the Lynx are not in the semifinals without State's play today. Yeah, and a great job to State. And also, Goomboy and Floaties had a great few sh goals of their own. But it really was this player. He is so deadly accurate when he is redirecting the ball that you've got to have an ironclad defense or else he is going to make you pay for it. I mean, not to mention, uh, you know, Goom and Floaties as well setting him up. I think, you know, 80% of his shots were assisted. He had a couple of great solo plays as well. But, I mean, that one right there, that was Goom picking up the playmaker. Three assists in one game. But a shout-out to State picking up our player of the game. Player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes the team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. State is your Idaho Central Credit Union player of the game. Well, as we close out on the night, Jacob, we head into next week with four teams left alive. What are your final thoughts as the club championship nears its end coming next week? Uh, we had a lot of games go into game, uh, the final games, game three and game five, but I think the main reason is just don't get too confident if you get one win, especially in a best of three. Don't just go around the field thinking you can get a bunch of demos and it's going to work out for you. You still got to play together as a team, get that coordination, those rotations, because when the team play is there, that's where the wins truly come from. Well, congratulations to all of our teams on a fantastic night of Rocket League. The final four are set. Barracuda's Black, Barracuda's White, Lynx, and Stingrays will all have a shot at the club championship title next week. We'll be crowned the Fall Rocket League Esports Tower Champion. You want to make sure you tune in next Wednesday at 6 p.m. to find out. Expect demos, expect overtime, and probably expect some long series as well. Well, we'll close out with the top five, presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. And Army National Guard is the best team out there. Enjoy these top five plays and come back next week to see who will be crowned the fall club championship in Esports Tower Rocket League.